winter is here. I tend not to do as many long hikes this time of year. I like to find a spot and get that nice bushcraft set up. So this kit has been fine tuned over the last few months and now I've hit that sweet spot where everything in here just works spot on. So this is the Italian Alpini mountain rucksack. It's from the 1930s. There's been a couple of mods on mine. For example, it has the Alice pack straps. It has a couple of quick release buckles on there. And on the bottom, I've added some heavy duty laces to attach my sleeping bag. It's about 30 to 40 litre. But for me, that works great. It keeps me in that bushcraft mindset of choosing tools over gear. So the first item, it's from a company called Cold Steel. It's their version of the 1930s Soviet Army shovel. It's got the edge, so you can hack away. I use this instead of an axe. You can do so much around camp with this. It has a really low profile. It fits snug on the outside of the pack there. It's almost like they were designed to go together. The next item is this snug pack hammock quilt. It's a synthetic bag. It's water resistant, but what I like the most about this is there's no buttons, there's no zips on there. Basically one piece of fabric with a foot box, so there's no faffing on. Some people might think that's a con, but for me, I like it. I wouldn't take it past one degree Celsius, but for that temperature and what it is, the price I paid for it, about 60 pounds, it's great. Next item is this canvas bushcraft seat. When you're around the camp all day grafting, a stool to sit around the campfire on the night is a must-have in my opinion. I really like this. I'm still using the DD Superlight 3x 2.9 tarp. Super light, super compact and it's never failed me once. Next item in here, it's just a standard cotton bag. Now don't underestimate this because this is actually an amazing bit of kit and I'll tell you why. Normally we'll be full of food and fit everything I need for a few nights in there. A lot of people think waterproof everything, get all your waterproof bags inside your bag, which is good, but having at least one cotton bag in there, there's so many things you can do with it and I'm gonna quickly list some off now. So the benefits of a cotton bag is it's a towel or washcloth, it's a campfire glove, getting your food or your drink off the fire. It's a breathable bag, so if you're collecting tinder, you can put it in there and it's gonna air out, it's not gonna stay damp. Whereas if you put it in a waterproof bag, it would. You can use it as a water filter before you put it on to boil, just to filter out all that debris. So if you've got a stainless steel bottle, you can boil that up on the fire and you can wrap this around and it's like a hot water bottle holder. So you can take that into your bed with you on the night keep you nice and warm. So a cotton bag it might sound a bit ridiculous, but I used to carry a shemag, but actually I just put my food in a cotton bag and I'll just use this as a replacement for a shemag. The little hat as well in it. We've got a small lead. So the next item, it's very simple. Just a, a small grill. I'll not bring any extra utensils. I'll make a pair of tongs when I'm out in the woods. Combined with my knife, that's me cooking sorted little titanium grill works really well for your steak and your bacon also a little tip with this after you finish cooking and you've got that grease and you've got the fat still on there you just chuck it back on the fire and it'll burn all that off there's no washing up when you get back home it's just ready straight away for your next outing minimal maintenance with this one so it's good i'd actually like to say i forgot one item is a whiskey flask i can't believe i forgot that today but again it's minimal you're not carrying around loads of beers. You've got a little flask, it just slips in there, takes up no room. You need your whiskey, don't you, when you're out? Whiskey flask, don't forget it. And the last item in this center compartment is, it's a DD underquilt, packs up really small. If I can get it in there, in this little bag, then people shouldn't have no problem carrying this about. I did do one small modification on this. It has these shock cords all around it to attach to your hammock. I've left them on the, the tops of the underquilt, but around the sides, I've just taken them off and kept the carabiners on. I found it didn't fit as snug as I wanted it to. It was far too baggy. I don't know if that's with, it's gonna be the same like that with every hammock, but for the, um, the DD Superlight hammock that I use, I found it works a lot better. If you take the shock cords off around the sides, it fits a lot better. I feel a lot warmer, so little tip for you there. If anyone else wants to purchase one of these, you might want to do the same. You might not want to take them off fully, but if you shorten them, it may work better. So that's everything in that 
in the middle compartment there i will also say if you can see right at the bottom there there's like a waterproof layer so when you're you're chucking your bag about it's just that little bit extra protection for you it's very heavy duty this obviously if it's if built for a war scenario then me taking out to the woods for a day it's obviously it, it can handle it you know so aye side compartments now so in this first one these side compartments as well are they stretch out really well so we've got just a little bag of cordage i'll have my ridge line in here already set up with some air uh, with a couple of knots on there just to stretch out the tarp really quickly and i've uh, i've added a bowline knot as well so yeah it's the ridge line and then just another few pieces of, of cord just for any lashing i need to do or if the tarp's up a height and I need to peg it out, I need a bit of rope to pull it down. You got the extra cordage in there to do that. Next in here, I've got my fire making kit. So we've got the uh, a nice tin for charring cloth. We've got some nice fresh charred cloth in there as well. I have a little bit of twine. If you need to get that fire bundle going for a rod. And then lastly in here, just a flint and steel. It's obviously more of a luxury item, but it's, it's fun. It's a nice way to start a fire. So I've got plenty of fire starting methods in there. Also, the only thing I carry in my pockets are a Zippo lighter. It is more maintenance than other lighters. It will, will dry out a lot quicker than a Bic lighter, but I like it. It looks kind of cool like, so I, I choose this over a Bic lighter also. It's, it's windproof, isn't it? So it's a lot easier. And the only other item in my pocket I'll, I'll have with us is a little multi-tool. So along with the fire starting kit, I've got a lighter there for emergencies. I don't carry any little tab fire lighters. I feel like every time I'm going to the woods, every time I'm, I'm setting up that fire, I want to do it properly. It's great practice. If I was in a serious situation, if I had a bug out or something, then I, I'd chuck a few light fire lighters in. But for now, at this moment in time, I like to practice with uh, these tools. I like to keep things traditional sort of looking but I've got a little plastic bag here just a few plasters wet wipes headache tablets toothbrush and my headlight goes in there as well it's the Nikkor NU25 it's a great headlight I bought another one recently I can't remember what it's called but the weight like I'm used to this one now and the weight of the other one was man I've got a big head anyways and that's like that's enough for me to hold up my big old head. So this is really light, it fits on your head and you forget about it. I fell asleep with this on before. You just forget it's there. So yeah, a new 25 headlight. I would really recommend that one. And the last couple items in this side pouch is my clean canteen water bottle. This is a 40 ounce water bottle. So I have upgraded the size of this. I have two smaller ones, but it got to the point where why well, have two small ones when I can just have one big one. It almost slots perfectly into this Torx 700 milliliter container. I find just a little napkin, I pop that in there and then slide that in. It gets that nice suction tightness in there. So the only thing is rattling there is a handle, but it's, it fits really well. I did do a video, five items I've stopped using and this was on there, but because it fits now in there, I can have a coffee in the morning in that. So that's the clean canteen. 40 ounce with the 700 milliliter Torx titanium pot. That's the last thing for that side pouch. The final side pouch, again, I love how wide these open up. I can fit way more in here if I need to, but I do like to carry minimal gear. Not necessarily lightweight, but minimal. In here, I say I like to carry minimal. This is definitely a luxury item. A little UCO candle lantern. Just when you're around camp and you've got that nice glow from the fire, you can prop this up on your tarp or in the background and it just you just get a nice feel around camp it's way better than the headlights or you know the light from a light bulb it's not the same as like a natural fire light they last for ages as well definitely get a night's worth of light with one candle so i you see your candle lantern I've got the um the Baco laplander so i've had this item for ages as well and it's, it's just solid it cuts really well for the size of it. I keep thinking I want to upgrade a saw and get a bigger one, but this it just cuts so nice that I don't need to. This this does it. This does the job for me. I've got the Mori Garberg knife. This is more of a recent purchase. I was using another Mori before the one you get off Amazon, and it's good, but this is definitely next level. This is carbon steel. 
It's got a lot more weight on it. It's got that 90 degree spine so you can spark your ferro rod. It's full tang. The rubber grip and the rubber sheath so if it does get wet they're going to dry off a lot quicker. I, I do like these sheaths so that works really well. So the three tools I have, you've got the Laplander saw, you've got a knife, you got this Here's a tiger. You got this shovel slash axe. That's my bushcraft kit there. You can do so much with these three things. Like you might not be able to build a big house, you probably just could, but if you're just going out and doing little bushcraft, setting up tripods, building benches or chairs, and just basic shelters, these three items are more than capable like so. There we go. The last item for today, I mentioned this earlier, the DD Super Light Hammock. For the last couple of months I've been using this and I don't want to go back to floor camping like hammock camping, it's so nice. I'm not normally a back sleeping on my back as well, but I've learned to do it and I love hammock camping now. This that's it now. I can't see myself going back for a while. You get the head support, you don't need to bring a pillow. You've got a second seat. I've, obviously I've got my bushcraft seat, my little stool. And then if you want a bit extra back support, you can just go swing in your hammock for a little bit. Keeps you up off the ground, away from all the bugs, if it's wet. I just love hammock camping now. I'll make it work with the, the underquill and the sleeping bag. I'm getting down to zero degrees, one zero degrees Celsius. In the UK, obviously where I'm from, it does get a little bit colder than that, but not too much. If it does get colder, I chuck on my hot water bottle with the cotton bag and I'm sorted. There we are. Okay, that's everything. That's the, the whole kit. Is it minimal or is there too many luxuries in there? I think it's fairly minimal. Obviously, it's, it's bushcraft. You want to be going out there and, and crafting stuff rather than bringing stuff. Let me know what you think in the uh, comments section. Have I got too much stuff here? Have I not got enough? It works for me. Is there a right and wrong when you do this kind of stuff? Nah, everyone's gonna have different setups, different ways of doing things, and that's good. Whatever makes you happy, but this bag and this kit here, I'm happy with it. I'm I'm constantly thinking how can I how can I upgrade? How can I change? What else can I buy? It's a bad mindset to be in. What can I buy? But I I've got it really good here. This has got me through this winter. We're in February now, so it is it's it's coming to an end unfortunately no snow which i was not be about if anyone's got any ideas or, or new items of kit that'll benefit me or you just want to share in the comment section please do it this is what this channel is all about everybody getting in and having their saying what they think is right what they think is wrong if you think this is a daft little setup that is i don't mind we're almost at 100 subscribers now i know it doesn't sound like a lot but that to me is it's it's mint i'm not posting as much as i'd like to as well i am going to get into a nice routine one day but everyone who's subscribed so far anyone who's just clicked on this video and watched it it really means a lot thank you so much so on that note i'll see you next time